Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. Uh, remember yesterday I told you guys that I was supposed to be in Mexico today? Well, yeah, I checked the weather in uh, Cancun. It was 88 degrees high for today and uh, I'm stuck here in Michigan in a snowstorm. But it's like I've mentioned, it's always summertime here at the Reptarium. I mean, it's always a balmy 80, 82 degrees. Humidity is amazing. Ivy is looking good here today. Uh, things are coming together really well at the Reptarium expansion. And I'll talk more about tomorrow, about the fact that uh, Lori and myself are still gonna be able to get a little bit of a getaway. Some of you have mentioned I've been looking very tired lately. Uh, yeah, obviously it's been a pretty hectic time, but uh, I've had a great time. I'm so excited about the future of this place and how things are coming together. So uh, kind of that adrenaline has been keeping me going. Al Macino starting to go opaque didn't eat last week of course that's probably wise because he's starting to go into a shed but you know I tell you what as we're getting closer to the March 13th which by the way March 13th we open up here at the Reptarium for the grand opening of the expansion so please come join us uh, as we're getting closer you may ask you know what's the point why did I do the Reptarium expansion? Had a handful of little baby gargles hatch, huh? Yeah, what did we get? We've got a bunch of different ones, actually. Okay, so. oh, this one's cool. So this is a sibling to the other one you guys had shown. Oh, okay, yeah, the, the one that we showed the other day that hatched, this one hatched out with it, and it's got some beautiful chocolate Yeah, this one's there. super cool, too. Yeah. Like, uh, both the parents have red backgrounds, so oh. I'm sure that all of that black will turn, turn red. red. Oh, my God. It's really cool to watch them change. Yeah, exactly. Okay, this is more of a blotch one, right? Yeah, so this one should turn out pretty nice, actually. Both of these guys are from the same pairing. Okay, so they're uh, both blotches. So yeah. what, what's the, are they? They're both orange blotches. Orange uh, blotch line, yep, cool. And it's crazy how they do that. You know, they're hatched almost like gray and then all that orange and red come in as they get older. Absolutely incredible. They're so absolutely cute. They're adorable. Any updates on any Deadpool stuff that's coming or potentially no Dracula? No Deadpool, but there's a Dracula. There's a couple babies that should hatch soon. Oh I'm like gosh, waiting, waiting. Oh my gosh, I can't <laughs> wait. I hope that I Their can. Their eggs are huge. Oh, that's here. awesome. That's okay, good. So this then we the have last this little, one. So oh, strike. another strike bee again. That's so cute. That's so amazing. So that's awesome. So cool. So uh, lots of baby geckos. Loving it. Definitely. Uh, leopard gecko season is just around the corner. Again, much different leopard gecko season for us this yeah, year. Yeah, it'll be a lot easier. Yeah, for a lot me easier. To take care of. <laughs> exactly. So uh, that's cool. And then again, hopefully we'll get some Deadpool eggs. Dracula lines coming up. So good job as always, Jessica. Thank you. Awesome. We have a ton of stuff that we're going to be unboxing here pretty soon on the vlog. But uh, this package showed up. I'm not sure if I ordered something or not, but it's really heavy. Heavy usually means it's good, right? Is that what, is that, is that what it is? I don't know. It so, could be rocks. It could rings. be rocks. I'm not sure. And again, it might be something I ordered that just showed up. So, or <laughs> someone sent me something. I'm not 100% sure what it is, but uh, we might as well go ahead and open it and see what is going on. Oh, oh there's, what the heck? there's Starfleet oh. peanuts. <laughs> this isn't exciting. It isn't exciting? No, I know what it is. What is it? It's oh, the... it's silicone. <laughs> Oh my god! I ordered, I ordered some M1. Uh, so yeah, thank you, uh, whoever I ordered that. From. <laughs> so that was an exciting unboxing. But we do have a ton of other stuff we're going to be unboxing here pretty soon. So if you sent us stuff, uh, stay tuned. It'll be coming to the vlog soon. You know, I was walking down the aisle and I couldn't help but see this. Uh, yeah, that is. Let me just brighten this up a little bit. That is a black-headed python wrapped around a paper towel holder. I, I'm assuming there's a story behind this because uh, I don't think that it should be. It's literally trying to eat the paper towel right now. So I've got to find Andrea and find out what the story is behind this. Andrea? Yes. Is there a reason my black headed python is wrapped around paper towel? Not me. Yeah. No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> yeah. So he, as you know, he's a bit uh, food aggressive. He yeah. gets excited. Anytime you go in there to change the water, you have to have some defense. And uh, he took it today. He took it. He so took you it. just left it with him for the time being. Okay, yeah. you'll get it. Okay. Good. All right. Well, good. Well, at least it was uh, paper towel and not your arm. So uh, thankfully. Okay. <laughs> what, are you, what are we doing here? We're maneuvering. Trying to get it out. Yes. <laughs> he's trying to eat the ball now. Oh, okay. If he's occupied, now he's got that. the ball. <laughs> Oh, you got it back. Now can you get the ball back? That would be the big question. He's not even biting it. He just, he's holding it. Come on, buddy. I don't want to sacrifice my finger. Oh. <laughs> now you lost the ball. Oh, you got it. You got ah. it. Oh. 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 Okay, okay, okay. Oh. Back in. Back in you go. This guy's determined. Now he's got the ball again. 
We're good, and we're good. Oh, good job, Andrew. Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. So what's the point? I mean, why, if the Reptarium was going so well, would I go and do all this craziness for what's over there? Well, let's start by just giving you guys the layout uh, for those of you guys that are like, you know, you know the old Reptarium, I think, but uh, we'll kind of give you the whole walkthrough. Obviously, we've got the tortoises, we've got Matilda, we've got Bowser over here, just like always, you know? And the fact was is that the reason I started the Reptarium, I talked to you guys about this, is I wanted to share the opportunities that I've been having my whole life to get up and close and personal with animals, to be able to take the exhibit from beyond the glass. Not just look at reptiles, but hold reptiles, touch reptiles, interact with reptiles. And that was the whole kind of brainchild behind this, right? Hi, Bella. How you doing, baby girl? And it's so cool that it absolutely worked. I mean, the fact that we were able to bring people in and they were able to hold snakes and feed alligators and pet lizards and hold tarantulas, that was what the dream was with the Reptarium. And it worked so well that it was time to kind of take the next step. You know, the point is, is that I want the coolest, biggest, most insane reptile zoo on the planet. Now, I'm not there yet, obviously. That's the long-term goal, right? I could sit back and just kind of enjoy the Reptarium like it is, and I have loved it. But I wanted to do something bigger and better, give more opportunities, more experiences, more just amazing opportunity for people to mess around. So obviously, we've got the turtle pond. They're in there somewhere, I promise, guys. And that's the opening into this. We've got, obviously, Diddy and Dixie's cage are gonna be right over here. And you walk in, and the gift shop is over here. Got, obviously, Ivy. And look at how amazing Ivy is looking, just hanging out in the water. I mean, it's so cool. So, obviously, the entrance is over there. You're gonna walk just like I walked there. This is actually the exit over here. Obviously, the gift shop's over here. We're gonna have some really cool animals in this cage that are coming next week. Like I mentioned before, we've got a lot of stuff coming next week. And then this is just kind of the aisleway of a bunch of stuff. This is where I wish I had a sloth, but that is just my best sloth for now. And then there's just a lot of other cool animals that are going into all of these enclosures. Of course, Al Machino's right over here, and he's actually going into shed. That's probably why I didn't eat last week. We've got Moo Moo the cowrie tick right down here. We've got my blue iguana up here, kind of settling in. One of the things we're definitely gonna do is a lot of kind of foliage and stuff like that, but I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Obviously, I love this enclosure a tremendous amount. Salt and pepper over here pretty soon. We, of course, have the arboreal cage over here. Right in this room right here, obviously, is the birthday party room in the mural kind of a mess right now with things like that. Walking over here, you know, the more exhibits. This, of course, is the snake massage room. Got the animals are gonna be going over here. These cages will be fixed out with rock and timber. Uh, there's the snake massage room. Come around the corner here. We have the pedestal stool for the fish spa. Of course, the croc monitor is gonna go over here. So that's basically the overview. And again, the point is, why would I do it? Is because this is my passion, you know what I mean? Did it make sense financially? I don't know, probably not. Maybe, I'm not even sure yet. How would I possibly know? It didn't matter to me because my passion is to share these things and to continue to give incredible environments for my animals, continue to learn the best husbandry techniques. Even after 32 years, I'm still learning. I'm changing my perception. And this place is kind of making it happen. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. This isn't where it ends. It doesn't end here. We have another expansion in mind that's gonna be later this year, maybe early next year. And then who knows beyond that? I want a amazing place that people will come from all over the world to see, and that is the point. Not because of ego, not because of finances, because I just wanna share this experience with the world and get people to love reptiles as much as I do, and this is the best way I know how to do it. Eric, I know you're excited. Colubrids are about to start getting feeding and stuff like that, so what do you they got? They sure are, man. It's so crazy to have them all back. It's funny, because I was just checking on this girl. This is a pink eye leucistic Texas rat. I know, she's a beauty. I love these things, man. I am so excited to see her breed again this year. It's just something about a solid white snake like that, but it's got a cool attitude and a cool kind of personality. Yeah, they're really cool. And the fact that we bred it to a snow Texas and produced snows that were half leucistic blew me away. I would have never expected really that. Cool. Really, yeah, really, really cool. Really, really cool. I know so. we've got some that were raising up and there were some like of the patternless line or yeah. something and some other things. So that's really exciting. I can't wait to see that happen. Yeah, it's just cool that the albinism passed on. So that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it sure is. Another really cool one is this tiger scaleless corn snake. I, wow, just wow. Nice. What is that? 
So, you know, the interesting story is that my buddy Forrest Fanning actually produced this animal. And all the scalars are basically pretty similar. But this one's really interesting. And it even has a different kind of belly pattern to it and stuff like that. So he turned it tiger. Uh, okay. We don't know if it's genetic or not, if it passes on in heron or anything like that. But uh, we're going to start working on that and seeing if we can't prove it out. Because it is a stunner. Really hope so. I forgot about like half of these snakes. I was bringing them up, putting them away. I'm like, whoa, I forgot. <laughs> whoa, I forgot. So, I know, like I said, it's, it's really exciting. It's really cool to see him back up here. Yeah. Uh, get some food in them soon yeah. and go from there. Just a few more weeks and we'll be talking about getting colubrid eggs, which is always an exciting time of the year. And guys, I'm not going to lie to you. I love BHB reptiles and breeding reptiles, but there is going to be some pretty major changes coming over the next probably 10 to 12 months with BHB. Uh, nothing too crazy to where I'm still going to work with them. I'm still going to breed. Still same crew. I'm so fortunate to have an amazing crew and stuff like that. Uh, it's just that we're going to probably change things up, kind of streamline things. Uh, I'm really excited about the future, the kind of my direction I'm going to do. I'm going to take you guys along on a journey. It's going to be a little bit of a hybrid between what you're seeing here and what you see over at the Reptarium. Something that's just a hybrid between those two things. Probably some less animals so we can take care of them differently, set them up differently. Uh, I'm really excited about it, but I've got to get the first Reptarium done before I worry about this. But definitely get ready for some pretty massive changes this summer. Checking up on the emerald tree boas that we just put in here that Jessica did this whole environment. Looks really good. This one's just chilling off here. The other one's way up at the top over by the light there. Not sure exactly what it's doing, but we're just going to monitor the temperatures a little bit, make sure that we're giving them everything that they need. Right now it looks really good, but wow, I tell you what, what incredible animals. And that cheeky little monkey up there, uh, he needs to come down on the branches for sure. Uh, we'll get these guys settled in, probably feed them in the next day or two. Uh, oh my God, that's a dream animal come true. I I'd take you guys on a really quick kind of what wrapping up this place is going to mean. We obviously got to get the countertop over here. We are still finishing out the gift shop. All the gifts and stuff are coming in. Lots and lots of foliage going in. Tons of greenery in this cage. In every single cage, there's going to be tons of greenery. We still have to fix up all of this so you don't see any wood and stuff like that. Get the greenery right there. Also get the greenery around the tops of all of the cages. Obviously, we've got to punch out the fish pods, which is going to happen here in the next few days. Fish pods coming in. Get that totally, totally done. We've got to obviously get all the animals. I mean, that's a big thing that's going to be happening here in the next week, too. Got to finish out the fronts of this room. Kind of make this a little bit better. Put up some art on the walls and stuff like that. Make it feel real homey for the snake massage, of course. Pretty set with the birthday room, to be totally honest with you. Just got to clean it up. Do some of the seaming on the walls and fixture the windows and stuff like that. Get some foliage for back here. Some other type of stuff here. Lots of foliage. And that's about it, guys. I mean, we're getting close. I mean, again, Friday the 13th, March the 13th is our opening day. I think we're going to make it. It's amazing. It's exciting beyond what I could possibly tell you guys, but I think we're going to be pretty good, guys. So uh, that's basically it. And then we open and we have a great time. Got a banana for my girl, Bella. Bella, you want a banana, girl? Come on over here. You want a banana? Come on. Come on, banana monster. There you go. You want a banana? There you go. <laughs> I miss feeding her bananas. Whenever I take a few off, I just love it. I mean, she's just such a good animal. I love her to death. Uh, Diddy and Dixie are going to be amazing in the front window for sure. There's no doubt about it. But I tell you what, Bella still has my heart. I mean, she is such an amazing animal. I always say Bella is a three bite banana eater. Every time she'll eat three bites and then she's done. She's such a dainty little girl. Hey, what's up, guys? So um, today I actually get the uh, lovely honor, honor of showing you guys and showing how we're going to sort of approach the Maasai hybrid here. I'm going to try and establish some trust. And that trust is going to start with food. As, as with most of their rhino guanas, they, they, they kind of they kind of couldn't resist me when I when I brought in the super worms. So I thought it was my good looks, but it was really actually the worms here. So let's, uh, let's give it a shot. I'm going to try things a little slow. I don't want to like I don't want to scare her because usually a lot of times the more sudden the movement the more likely they're going to defend themselves so I try to go as slow as possible. I'm hoping to actually kind of like work on the stimulus so like the, the the idea that the bugs are moving in the cup already so I want her to come to me I really don't want to go shoving this in her face too too particularly much. There she goes there's one. So one fell out of the cup yeah and now look at this just uh, grabbing the ones out of the cup first. That's my finger. Don't go for my fingers, please. Good girl. So we'll go ahead and actually close things up. That's all I really care about. I always just want a small, easy, easy. Little steps, right? Little spots. See, she's got a little one that you distract yourself with while I close it so she's not scared of the door. 
Just did a complete change on the alligator tanks, the car salt and peppers tank, just to kind of clean it up a little bit. There's quite a bit of dust from the background that got into the water and I just didn't think it was gonna filter out. So starting over, gonna move those guys in here in about a week or so. So that gives it time for that water to cycle, get all the chemicals out, as well as the fact to warm up to the right temperature, right? So uh, I think it's gonna look good because now it's crystal clear. That's a, a big improvement for sure. Of course, Lori is continuing to work away at dusting. You're getting close to the end though, right? Um, sure, I'm gonna say that to make myself feel better. <laughs> but it's pretty cool. You can see how that seam right here, you can barely see it. And then up here, it looks so different. That's just the technique. Again, she's using that kind of M1 silicone. She puts a bead down there and then she takes this dust right here and actually colors it in. It just blends perfectly. So uh, there are thousands and thousands of little seams. And oh, Laura, you missed some screws right here, just so you know. So, okay, so get back to it. But there are thousands of seams and screws. She's got to hit every single one of them. She's, I'd say she's like 80% done. Still, uh, that's it's a lot of work and she's done an amazing job. Thank you guys, as always, for watching. Literally, you have changed my life and I love each and every one of you. If you don't mind, you may know I started a podcast. You can subscribe to that podcast called Checking In right over there. You can go through an entire playlist of vlogs right over here if you don't mind. Subscribe to the vlog channel here. Turn those post notifications on for me. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember to be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.